Good morning. Blessed is the name of the Lord, and it's a wonderful thing to be together and praise the Lord this morning, not just for what he has done, but for who God is. Um, just a couple of announcements this morning as Roger's going to come up and do our call to worship. As he comes up, remember that the back of the programs have all the activities that are coming up. Um, we have this weekend is our women's conference. It's our virtual, semi-virtual, semi-in-person women's conference this weekend. Um, if you have registered already, at the end of today's service, we have a gift for you all the way from Tampa DHQ. So at the end of today's service, if you register, you'll get a little treat from um, DHQ for those people that have registered. There is a men's fishing trip coming up. Please talk to Captain Israel. Um, it, it, registration is by today, tomorrow. Okay, or oh, the 23rd, this week. So as long as we get you that you want to sign up, we'll um, sign you up for that fishing trip. We have Vacation Bible School up already. Start putting it in your calendar to come and volunteer. It is a day Vacation Bible School, um, June 7th through 11th. Those are kids that are interested in going to camp for music, we, uh, your auditions are uh, due soon, so please talk to us so we can get your auditions filled up. And we're just here to praise the Lord. Are you ready? Are your hearts ready? Let's praise the Lord together. Roger. Good morning. Uh, today's call of worship will be from Jeremiah 10, 6 through 7. No one is like you, Lord. You are great, and your name is mighty in power. Who should not fear you, King of the nations? This is your due. Among all the wise leaders of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is no one like you. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Uh, would you like to stand? Um, we're going to play a new song for some of you, maybe not for all of you, maybe some of you already know. It's a lovely medley. Uh, when we are rehearsing, I don't know about you, but when we were rehearsing and we left here, I kept humming that song in my mind, and I went online to try to find out how much was a ticket to go to Jamaica. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this song as much as you enjoy, that I enjoy, and as well, always thank you for Miss Lisa, Miss Jeanette, Mike, that brought that song to us. It is happy in the Lord. It's a little medley. If you don't get in the first time, most verses repeat so you can get in the second time. So sing with us and worship the Lord. And Galatians 5.1 reminds us this morning, for, free, for freedom in Christ has set us free. So we need to stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. So this morning as we sing this song, open your hearts, open your mind, and be joyful in the Lord, because this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. 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 Go on, go on, go on. There is something now, it's the Holy Spirit. Oh, 
to go on is the Holy Ghost power inside of me telling me to go on. It's the Holy Ghost power inside of me telling me to go on. Go on, go on, go on. We shall have a new name. We shall have a new name in that land. In that land, that sunny, sunny land. We shall have a new name in that land. In that sunny land. New name. New name. Precious name in that sunny land. New name, precious name in that sunny land. New name, new name, precious name in that sunny land. New name, precious name in that sunny land. Oh, what a wonderful thing, a very wonderful thing to be free from. Hallelujah! And the price within. To be made of joy, tears with Jesus, my Lord. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. What a thing. wonderful thing. Oh, what a wonderful thing. A very wonderful thing. To be free from sin and the price within. To be made of joy, tears with Jesus, my Lord. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. You can tell the world. You can tell the world about this. You can tell the nations about that. Tell, tell them Jesus has come. Tell them about the Comforter has come. He brings joy to my soul. He brings joy to my soul. You can tell the world about this. You can tell the nations about that. Tell them Jesus has come. Tell them that the Comforter has come. He brings joy to Now you're going to be humming the song the whole day. And that's a good one. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is nothing that we go through. And there is no chain can hold us down. There is no bondage that can keep us uh, uh, bonded. Because when Jesus rose and he rose in victory, all our chains were broken. So set yourself free. Let the burdens go. Lay them at the altar of Jesus and let him set you free.
every chain, to break 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 every chain. There's an army, there's an army. Every chain to break 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 every chain. There is an army, there's an army. Every chain to break every chain to break every chain. There is power. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. Hallelujah. word says this morning so rejoice in the lord and be glad all you who obey him shout for joy all you whose hearts are pure and we've done that already we've begun that already in this in this church service we're happy people we sing about what makes us happy in jesus so just in a few minutes and if you'll if you need to stand that's fine to praise the lord if you want to sit that's fine but just take a few seconds to in to yourself to the lord to praise his name lift up your praises to him just now father we thank you for an opportunity to come into your fellowship into this core as a body of believers and we now lift up our praises to you father hear our prayers just now Thank you for your love, Father. You are there to help us break in anything is coming our way, Lord. Thank you for mercy, and we love you, Jesus. Thank you. Father, I just thank you for keeping us. Um, Father, I thank you for the freedom we have, God, that we can come to you in all situations, whether good or bad, God. We can just come to you and cry out to you, and knowing that your arms are always open to receive us. Father, Father God, we thank you today. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to come to your sanctuary Amen. to worship you. Yes, Lord. To give you honor and glory. Father God, thank you for responding, God, to faithfulness. 
that's why we ask you today. Clean us, give us something where we can be faithful because we are faithless. We ask you to come and fill us with the spirit where we be able to flow in Jesus' name. With the psalmist, Lord, we pray, we uh, pour out our heart, our hope in you. And we know that you are our help and our shield. And we just sang, you break every chain and you have power over evil. And Father, right now, we just lift up prayers silently of those that are, are bound by the devil, those of that in our family that are ill, those that are uh, need your, you so much, Lord. We lift those loved ones and those friends and those people that we know up to you. Father, we thank you for those that gather here in this place. Thank you, Father. Because your spirit is here and Father, and we feel your presence, Father. Be with us. Transform us, Father. Help us to leave here bold, boldly as we approach the throne of grace and redemption. Yes. Father, we thank you for your word. And as we read from your word, we pray that you would speak to our hearts and to our minds and that our lives would be changed uh, because we've come and worshiped together and worshiped you and lifted your name on high and read your word. Thank you so much for your son, Jesus, who died and rose on the cross for each of us. In Jesus' name we prayed, and all God's soldiers said, Amen. 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 Good morning, church. I was feeling good before I came here, but I don't know, as soon as I sit in, in there, but I have palpitation. I don't know, if you see me fall down, just ignore it, okay? <laughs> Maybe I took my medication, my blood pressure medication twice, by mistakes. So I'm here to do the scripture reading this morning. Uh, it's gonna take place in uh, the book of Acts, chapter four, verse eight through 12. And uh, when I read, the scripture and I notice a difference in Peter who had denied Jesus three times and that same Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit and he had the courage and to tell the accusers the Jesus that you have killed is the cornerstone then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit said to them rulers and elders of the people if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed then now then know this you and all the people of Israel it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you here. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. And the last verse says, salvation is found in no one else. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. 
So if there is one in you, between among you here, who don't know Jesus yet, it is the time to stand up and say, Jesus, I want to accept you as my savior. And let me tell you, let me give you a testimony before. I'm so sorry. On Easter Sunday, my daughter's mother called me and said, Alex, did you talk to Jenny? I said, yes, I talked to her. Did she tell you anything? I said, no, she didn't say anything. She said, oh, okay. She went to the church today and she told the mother, and if they call, they make the calling for anybody to accept Jesus, I will be the first one. So the preacher did, after the preaching, didn't say anything. But before the final prayer, and the guy said, the Lord tells me to ask anybody who would like to accept Jesus is the time. And she got up and went there, and the brother followed her, and they both accepted Jesus on that Sunday, that Easter Sunday. Glory to God. May God bless you. Amen. Doctrine number six. It says, we believe that the Lord Jesus Christ has by his sufferings and death made an atonement for the whole world so that whosoever will may be saved. Amen. Happy in the Lord. Yeah, it doesn't come out. Keeping God's commandments, that's the end of the So somebody knows some cheap tickets to go to Jamaica. I'm ready. I am ready. Good morning again. Uh, it has been a great time of worship already. Uh, thank you for your positive ex spirit. You know, because I have to say something. Sometimes we go to church and we don't bring really a positive spirit with us. I don't know if you've ever been there. Sometimes we bring that spirit of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what is wrong with my church today. And I'm going to let somebody know what I don't like about my church. Um, you know, and uh, that happens to us many times in the past. And, you know, and the one that I love the most is when people come to me and say, well, I don't like the church because this church not really feeding me um, and then I always tell them you know with a church we're not a buffet um, so and you have to take care of your feeding feeding itself by yourself you know this should be the Sunday should be just a little cherry on the topping of your dessert okay the growing takes place throughout the week but we don't see this here. We see in the other church. We see here that the spirit is very positive. So thank you. I just want to commend you. Uh, because people come here, you tell that you're happy on the Lord. And if you're not happy, that's something that I want to say as well. Don't feel bad. Okay? The difference is when we're not happy, we just have to remember there is a Lord and he's my help. Okay? Because uh, we can fall in this trap that if we are if we are Christians, we should not be sad. Because if we said there's something wrong with our relationship, and that's not true. Okay? But just keep that in mind. You know, once we go through the dark times, what it comes to the other side is like we have the Lord. And we can be positive even in the middle of troubles. That's the message. Okay? So as we move to our second week of this book of Acts, Let's first recap what we covered last Sunday, just in case if you're not here sh shaming you. No, this, no. In case if you don't remember, uh, the books of Acts talks about, approaches, talks about what Jesus did after resurrection, okay? So the books start with Jesus hanging out with the disciples. That's what we look of last week. Uh, and he was talking about this new type of kingdom, what I like to call the upside down kingdom. And disciples, if you remember, they were ready to go out and they were ready to share the good news. And then Jesus said, not yet. And said, don't go out yet. Wait until you receive this new power. 
And then we see that was in Pentecost, and there was an Israelite festival, and then thousands of Jewish pilgrims were coming back to Jerusalem, and then the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, and then they start speaking and communicating in their own language, meaning the language of the people that came through that festival, because it was too many people from different nations, different languages, but then the disciples were able to communicate directly on the language that they understood. Everybody was excited, except for some people that start saying, well, I think the disciples are drunk. Uh, that's what's happening. And then Peter goes and addresses the crowd and he says, no, we're not drunk. It's the Holy Spirit that took over this place. And then many accepted, uh, they repented, and they accepted the Lord on that day. Thank you, Mr. Alex, for that testimony. I really appreciate it. So then we see in Acts chapter 3 that Peter and John were going to the temple to pray and there was a beggar. There was somebody outside that was always asking for money. And then when they saw Peter and when they saw John, he asked for money. And then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give it to you. In the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. And then Peter helped the man and he stood up and he began to walk. And the people were amazed, seeing what was happening. But then at the end of chapter 3, we see that, people, that Peter addresses the people and says, Why are you guys so amazed? Like, why are you guys so surprised? And he explained that the man was healed by the power of God. And then on that day, uh, some of, some, and, and then the one who did that was Jesus. The same one that they crucified. And now we come to chapter 4. And as we see in scripture, while all this was happening, the temple guards came and they did not like what the disciples were doing. So they arrested Peter and John. But it was dark at night. So then the next day, they presented Peter and John to the elders, to the rulers, to the teachers of the law. And then they asked them, hey, Peter, John, by what power? Or what name did you do that? So they are questioning, by what power or what name did you do that? That, they meant the fact that the man that could not walk, now it's walking. That's what they mean. What power? By what power or what name did you do that? And I can almost picture in my mind that they're like, I want to hear that. By what power, what name did he do that? And then the answer was the one that Mr. Alex read for us. But notice how Peter does not really answer the question immediately. Instead, he first turned the question painting that they were upset because of something good that he did for a crippled person. So Peter replies and he say, when you say that, are you saying the fact that somebody was not able to walk and now can walk. And I think this is important for us as Christians. Because sometimes we concentrate less on the miracle, on somebody that was blessed, on somebody that had a negative uh, situation to turn into a positive. And sometimes we concentrate more on the way things happen. You see, they were missing the point here. Instead of saying, this man that was crippled, that was a beggar, and now has a new way, you know, he can walk now, he can possibly have a more normal life, they were concerned of, how did you do that? And sometimes, especially now, that doesn't happen in our church. You always keep that in mind, okay? It doesn't happen here. We're, we're a good church. But sometimes we're just so concerned about what we think is right that we forget to see the results of what's taking place in the world. And I believe that as followers of Jesus, we should be less concerned about Republicans, about Democrats, and their agenda. We should be more concerned in how we can bless our brothers and sisters, showing compassion. And thank you, Ms. Colonel, for addressing some. But you know, some of those topics as we should be more concerned about how can we help those that are 
dealing with minority suppression, those who are dealing with immigration issues, poverty, LGBTQ+, human brutality, persecution about the Asian community, discussions about COVID and those that are struggling with and suffering, just to name a few. We should be less concerned about do we believe in the vaccine? We don't believe in the vaccine. And we should be more concerned about how do we help those that are struggling with this awful disease. And this is what Peter is trying to tell here. You shouldn't be concerned of how. Instead, you should celebrate that that man now can walk. I was watching an interview with uh, one of the pastors that I admire, Francis Chang. And he touched on this subject, I mean, beautifully. He was talking that Peter, um, the message of Peter is also for the rulers of today. Um, people that they believe that instead of let me decrease so God can increase, he was saying that there's too many people, Christians today, that they are more concerned of let me increase so God increase. Look at me. Look at what I am doing. So I can bring glory to him. Look at me so I can point you to Jesus. It was in the Bible study over the phone that I participated every Thursday. And that's one of the things that we were talking about. It's like, you know, we're so concerned about the result. And we can fall in that trap. And I remember that growing up. Uh, I don't know if this happens here in the U.S. as well. But in Brazil, I remember that a lot of the preachers, officers, they would say, how many people... Did you bring to Jesus the seer? And that always make me feel awful because I was a new Christian. I was like, um, I don't know if I brought anybody to Christ the seer. But, you know, it was this idea of let me increase. Let me tell you how many people I have led to Christ the seer. So Christ increases. He needs me. And the fact of the matter is, it's not really our job. It's not really my job. It's the job of the Holy Spirit to convince. We can model. We can ask. We can invite. We can share a scripture. But we are not going to be able to make that person. It's not our goal, and it's not something that goes in our stats. Instead, we should be a way to be voice to those who have no voice. Showing understand to the less favorable. Educating and clothing ourselves with love and compassion. But Peter doesn't stop here. He declares, there it is, salvation and no one else. For there is no other name under heaven. Among men which must be saved. Which this is remarkable, I would say. Because he was talking to a group that should know that. I mean, you talk about the teachers of the law. People that should have in their hearts, right? So now he's telling those people, these very educated people, that there is no other name but in the name of Jesus Christ. That there has any power to save. However, Peter is saying here, something that they should know. And I start thinking with myself, like, how many times I listen to a message and then I catch myself thinking, I knew that. But maybe I haven't, I haven't been putting this into practice in my day to day. But I knew that. Because I think that we're really good in absorbing all this content. But then sometimes we fail in putting this into our lives. So we can be a different individual. But then they were shocked because they, now go back to the scripture here. They were shocked with, because they noticed that Peter was an ed, uneducated, very common man. And why is this important, you may ask. Think of me. The scripture gives us the opportunity to see that anyone can be saved and used by God. It's not a matter of. I, I, I said this here before, but I think it, it fits in this point again. 
we don't come to church ready. Okay? We come to church willing. Willing to receive, willing to be used. We come to church and we seek for the opportunity. We don't come to church, oh, you know, I, I, I can't go to church because I have some things that I have to take care of. So, Captain, uh, if I can't take care, take care of my sins in the next six months, you will see me. We don't do that. We come to church, we bring to the Lord, and we let the, wor- the Lord work with us. Okay? We give Him permission. It's a matter of us opening our hearts. Because here's the thing. I would say most of it, you may not agree with me, and if you don't, it's okay. But most of our sins, we already know. You can disagree, and it's fine. Most of our sins, we already know. We may have a hard time taking care of them, because we forget that the one that can helps us is Jesus Christ. So just think about it. So there is power in the name of Jesus. Amen? But I will say something else. And I don't want, I'm not being controversial, okay? So listen to what I'm saying first. I'm only, I'm only responsible to what I'm saying. I'm not responsible for what you're listening, okay? So just work with me. So many people just use the name of Jesus if the name of Jesus is a magical word. You see the, the non-believer doing that too. How many times have you seen somebody that's like, oh, Jesus. They're using their name in vain. So when we say there is power in the name of Jesus, it means that there is power in relationship with Jesus. There is power in knowing what Jesus did in Scripture. Do you remember when we used to have those bracelets, WWJD? What would Jesus do? Do you guys have this here? We had it in Brazil. I don't know how it came.